Welcome back to the Bitter Betty podcast. I'm Bitter Betty Deadhead here with my two cohorts. Bitter Betty Tova. And Bitter Betty Carol with an E. What's up, guys? We have a different type of video for you today. Um, we've we've had a lot of discussions recently, and because it is an election year, Carol had mentioned that she would like to know more about politics and kind of stuff uh, leading up into this election. And so I decided, because we, we both come from different kind of political backgrounds, it would be cool to show her some information that I found that helped uh, shape my beliefs and opinions so far. So I'm not, I don't want to show anybody this to change your mind. I want to give you information to help you make up your mind. So that being said, I think it's best to start from the beginning with the two parties and what is, what is fact, what I believe, maybe what we all believe, and maybe we'll even learn some new shit along the way. And that's always fun. I, you know, the more, you know, make an informed decision and that's what we're going to do. So this was one of the very first videos I ever watched when I was kind of on my political journey. This comes from PragerU. I want to preface this with saying that this is a biased source. Okay. This is more of a conservative leaning source. Uh, but this is the inconvenient truth about the democratic party. This is a hundred percent fact checkable. You can actually look up this information. It is accurate information, but it is, I just want to preface this with saying it is coming from a conservative source. So it is slightly biased in a sense, but the facts are true. So, uh, but we'll, we'll start with this video. We'll go so through. So it's something and... like after I watch it, sorry, yeah, go ahead. I was going to no, say it's something like that. So like if I'm watching it, like if I want to write something down, like I can literally go research it later and I'm going to get yeah. the same information from a different source. You should. Yes. Right. Cause like this is all based on history. Okay. So the lady that is going to be presenting this, her name is Carol Swain. She, uh, was a, um, professor of I be, like political science or, or political studies at Vanderbilt university. So she is a legit person. She is no longer with them. Uh, she's doing something different now, but she is a very reputable source of information. This is what she was teaching. Um, and so that's why I chose this video. Uh, to start with. And okay. then we can also, we, I, it would be cool to maybe even dive deeper. Maybe if you find something that says something different, we can go over it and compare the two and figure out what the truth is in the meantime. Okay. So. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, what do you, have you seen this deadhead? Nope. Oh, okay. Yay. Well then I'm excited. I'm excited to show you these videos. All right. Y'all ready? All right, cool. I'm yeah, absolutely ready. Into it. When you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party comes to mind? The Republicans or the Democrats? Most people would probably say the Democrats, but this answer is incorrect. Since its founding in 1829, the Democratic Party has fought against every major civil rights initiative and has a long history of discrimination. The Democratic Party defended slavery, started the Civil War, opposed Reconstruction, founded the Ku Klux Klan, imposed segregation, perpetrated lynchings, and fought against the Civil Rights Acts of the 1950s and 1960s. In contrast, the Republican Party was founded in 1854 as an anti-slavery party. Its mission was to stop the spread of slavery into the new Western territories with the aim of abolishing it entirely. This effort, however, was dealt a major blow by the Supreme Court in the 1857 case, Dred Scott versus Sanford. The court ruled that slaves aren't citizens, they're property. The seven justices who voted in favor mm. of slavery, all Democrats, the two justices who dissented, both Republicans. The slavery question was, of course, ultimately resolved by a bloody civil war. The commander in chief during that war was the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves. Six days after the Confederate army surrendered, John Wilkes Booth, a Democrat, assassinated President Lincoln. Lincoln's vice president, a Democrat named Andrew Johnson assumed the presidency. But Johnson adamantly opposed Lincoln's plan to integrate the newly freed slaves into the South's economic and social order. 
Johnson and the Democratic Party were unified in their opposition to the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment, which gave blacks citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave blacks the vote. All three passed only because of universal Republican support. During the era of Reconstruction, federal troops stationed in the South helped secure rights for the newly freed quick, slaves. I got confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm a little bit confused. So, all right, we have Abe Lincoln, mm -hmm. which we know was against slavery, right? right? You learned that back in grade school, right? Right. So, but then Johnson took his place, place when as he president, was obviously, after he was yeah. assassinated. But he didn't like Lincoln's policies proposed yeah he he did whatever not it was, because he was right? a democrat policies, they were for okay. slavery they did not want to integrate slaves into their society basically wait a minute so back then you didn't have to be you weren't of the same party to you be like president be, nope. and vice president mm -mm. the parties weren't what huh. they were today okay. there wasn't That's as many options either and so it was like you know i think it i don't know they may have even i would have to 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 search out the answer for sure because I don't know this, but I would imagine they may have even voted separately on that's president and vice president, and maybe that's why. Maybe he came in second and that's, he was automatically. I was about to say but that. as, yeah, you know what I mean. So that could, I would have to look up to be sure. I don't know that for a fact, so I don't know exactly how that came to be. But we we could definitely that's look into that. To look into and go deeper. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, okay. he was a Democrat, and and so. And the, as something, I mean, similar things actually happened after JFK was assassinated with Lyndon B. Johnson. I'm just going to point that out, but we will get to that later on uh, in, okay. this, in this whole, uh, these videos I have for you. So, okay. So, and then my next question, uh, a mm -hmm. follow-up question to that. So then, um, but when they still voted, they still voted for those things in those amendments because of the Republican party in general, yes. like when the votes? It, oh, well, it so like i want to be a little bit of devil's advocate here because there it wasn't like a landslide right so like there were some democrats who voted in favor but majority gotcha. of them voted against the only reason okay. it passed was because of overwhelming republican support and again to play devil's advocate that does not mean every single republican voted in favor okay gotcha. so like some did vote in op opposition to but the the overwhelming majority was Republican, and that's the only reason those civil rights movements passed. Got you. Okay. Okay. I'm caught up. Okay. Hundreds of black men were elected to Southern state legislatures as Republicans, and 22 black Republicans served in the U.S. Congress by 1900. The Democrats did not elect a black man to Congress until 1935. But after Reconstruction ended, when the federal troops went home, Democrats roared back into power in the South. They quickly reestablished white supremacy across the region with measures like black codes, laws that restricted the ability of blacks to own property and run businesses, and they imposed poll taxes and literacy tests used to subvert black citizens' right to vote. And how was all of this enforced? By terror, much of it instigated by the Ku Klux Klan founded by a Democrat, Nathan Bedford Forrest. As historian Eric Foner, himself a Democrat, notes, in effect, the Klan was a military force serving the interests of the Democratic Party. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, shared many views with the Klan. He resegregated many federal agencies and even screened the first movie ever played at the White House, the racist film, The Birth of a Nation, originally entitled The Klansman. A few decades later, the only serious congressional mm. opposition to the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964 came from Democrats. 80% of Republicans in Congress supported the bill, less than 70% of Democrats did. Democratic senators filibustered the bill for 75 days until Republicans mustered the few extra votes needed to break the log jam. And when all of their efforts to enslave blacks, keep them enslaved, and then keep them from voting had failed, the Democrats came up with a new strategy. 
if black people are going to vote, they might as well vote for Democrats. As President Lyndon Johnson was purported to have said about the Civil Rights Act, I'll have them as voting Democrat for 200 years. Mm -hmm. So now, the Democratic Party prospers yeah. on the votes of the very people it has spent much of its history oppressing. Democrats falsely claim that the Republican Party is the villain, when in reality, it's the failed policies of the Democratic Party that have kept blacks down. Massive government welfare has decimated the black family. Opposition to school choice has kept them trapped in failing schools. Politically correct policing has left black neighborhoods defenseless against violent crime. So when you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party should come to mind? I'm Carol Swain, professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt University for Prager University. Thanks for watching. To keep our videos free, click here. Click here. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that was one of the first videos I ever watched. And there is a counterpart to this one about the Republican Party. Slight clickbait in a sense, because it's not necessarily, not all negative about the Republican Party per se. But again, I said this is a conservative source, so just to point that out. Uh, but so far, what did you think about that information? I think it's inf a lot of inf information that I think I've known as like the last few years heading up just yeah. because of um, some of the things that I've watched mm -hmm. just even on freaking TikTok, right? Um, right. And actually a lot coming from, from black creators, not white creators. So yeah. that are conservative. So right. um, somehow I'm on the conservative side of TikTok, um, but- <laughs> um, It only takes one video, sure girl. How, it only takes one right. video. I'm like, I don't know how algorithm I algorithm is there, trashed after that. Like, I'm not a Trump fan at all. And you know how many things I keep getting on my freaking shit about Donald Trump. And I'm like, all right. But anyway, um, <laughs> all it takes is one click. <laughs> man it's so but um but so i find it's uh, it's all intriguing i want to know specifically <coughs> about um how the the president and vice president worked back then um yeah. and then i'm really curious to see the flip side to what they're saying going to say about the republicans um yeah. i've grown up most of my life where um we my mom was very 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 liberal my dad was very 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 conservative um, oh my god and, how did that work well i guess it was a little bit maybe different back then yeah well my mom often won a lot of arguments she would strong arm my dad into most things so um that doesn't sound familiar I, at all <laughs> so um and then i have always leaned which you ladies yeah. both know um <clears throat> Uh, for a long time, I was what I would consider very liberal. Um, for, and then that's changed as I've been kind of paying attention um, yeah. as, as the time goes on. So, I would call you, but I would say too, you're more of a JFK Democrat or, or liberal is what I would say. Like, because you're actually much more moderate with both, I would say, conservative and liberal values. Very much, I feel like us, like, you know, I for one, like I really get, I do get upset if people try and classify me as something, right? I am no, not a Republican. Right. I am not a Democrat. I am fully independent. I just vote on policies and what I think is best for the country and everyone involved. So that's why I try and do as much of my research as I possibly can. I want to do my due diligence. I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I try to outsource as hard as it is sometimes to listen to views that I don't agree with. I try and open myself to those because I have to, otherwise I'm only going to hear what I think here, you know, back to me. And I need to have my beliefs challenged to make sure they're correct. Right. Uh, but the history of the democratic party, no matter what anybody thinks or what it is now or whatever, but like where it started, like that made a huge impact on me. Cause I didn't know a lot of this stuff when I first like watched this video, I didn't know that the Democrats were responsible for the KKK mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. I yeah, didn't know they either. fought against the civil rights movement. So I, kn I, kn I knew that. Yeah. Uh, so in, like, like, it I kind of blew my mind. It, I definitely knew that. 
yeah, no, it blew my mind a little bit. And so, uh, you know, so that's why I kind of fell down the rabbit hole in general. So, so I, yeah, I definitely think we should see the other one, but what do you think? So I just looked it up cause I was very curious on how elections yeah. work back then. And you were right. Um, the, the president, okay. A, a majority election, uh, college votes would become president while the runner up would become vice president. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes sense, you know, and I've always said that it might be beneficial to have a representative of each party. Like, so if the president was Republican, then the, then the vice president would be a Democrat or whatever to provide some sort of balance mm -hmm. more in our, in our government. And it's interesting. Well, I would like to know why that changed. Well, if, if, if Trump became president and well, Biden become, and became vice president, that would oh be God. a, a freaking World War II, three, just in the, the White House. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, no, I don't. Well, even think I, about that. I, I, vice versa. <laughs> I'm curious to know. I'm curious to know when that actually changed, and here's why I think it's not that way anymore. Look it up, okay. because then you'd have a lot of assassinations, right? Mm -hmm. Because there'd be a lot. Yeah, I think true. there'd be a lot that more assassinations, right? Probably why. So that way, next way you can get over, whoever yeah. you wanted. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when did and so yeah. I think it's it's. And I'm so sorry if you guys hear my dog barking. No, it's okay. Uh, you know, so they were talking about what Lyndon B. Johnson said, you know, now I want you to think back, like, so JFK was assassinated and JFK, like, so Lyndon B. Johnson reversed everything that JFK had put into place, basically, when it came to integrating, uh, like, desegregation and stuff. Like, he wanted the opposite. He was not the same type of Democrat as JFK was. I think that's interesting. And now when they talk about welfare being decimating the, uh, the family, I actually had this debate with... Um, with gimmickless and um and I, I so i so i looked it up because he was like well welfare started in the 1930s so i don't see how that possibly affected in when lyndon b johnson was president in the 60s so i looked it up and what had happened was when welfare first came about in the 1930s there was so many regulations and stuff that kept black people from actually being able to qualify for it so they couldn't get it lyndon b johnson rolled back all of that shit to allow them to get on it and then they actually had people going house to house to make sure there was no man in the house See, this doesn't so you make... could only be on welfare if there was wow. no man in the house. And then they would go around and check to make sure there was no man in the house. And so then people started voting Democrat because they were relying upon them to get that money because they allowed them to have welfare. Before that, they didn't they didn't really need it because they were working. But, like, they were still being successful even though they were being so fucking oppressed and, like, discriminated against. They were that fucking resilient. And that is true inspiration to me, honestly. The fact that they were still being successful there's a lot of stories about successful people during that time which is crazy to me because they had so much against them and they still persevered that's See, some shit that's this, some amazing shit right there this doesn't make sense to me i asked i asked when did vice president stop being the runner-up uh and then uh, it says the amended the amendment 12 to the constitution was redefined on june 15th 1804 okay but President Abra Abraham Lincoln was president like in 1860-something, right? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to take some time to do some different some research on yeah. it and look it up and maybe come up with some stuff that we can talk about about that maybe. And who knows? Maybe that had something to do with, like, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know that information. It yeah. might have had something to do with how things kind of have worked out being a little bit more like it, it's like everything has to be one way or one the other way it mm -hmm. stopped being like an integrated type thing it's almost like our government is truly segregated now in that sense you're either red or you're blue oh, yeah there is absolutely. no in between you know there's no there's no in between anymore. yeah so is this which be is sad no it, absolutely is this the two-part series or is the next one the yes yeah okay, so we're so, going to do the inconvenient truth about the republican party next that's what and I that is in yeah I got, that's i already got it pulled up okay cool We're recording right now, baby. I love you too. Sorry, my son just Aww, got home from work. So sweet. What up, Toaster? <laughs> He's a mama's boy. As he should be. Racist. Oh. Sex. Hush. Let's get you pulled up first. Well, she just came out swinging. She's just like, <laughs> you're gonna know. You're gonna learn. 
Speech. I'm gonna catch you with these words right here. Okay. Okay. All right. So as y'all see, this is a two-part series. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, uh, like I said, this is from PragerU. Not... We already had that discussion, but like, this is all like fact-checkable stuff. But I do feel like the like the Republican Party wasn't all like rainbows, sunshines, and diamonds, right? They didn't not. do everything right. And not everybody was in line with what they thought, but the majority was. Okay, so mm -hmm. I just want to preface it with saying that because I don't want it to come off as being super one-sided, even though this is conservative material. Um, I just, I, I was able to look up this stuff and like confirm it, if that makes sense. And it explained it in a very simple way to me that I could understand, which I appreciate because, you know, your girl's old, her comprehension skills are struggling these days and she's the youngest one uh, on the panel here me too <laughs> just saying uh in my mind i will forever be 28 obviously so i'll go to 33 i like 33 yeah 28 was my jam you ladies ready why. for this just was. let's do it mm -hmm. racist sexist republican these words are virtually interchangeable at least according to most professors, journalists, and celebrities. So are they right? Let's take a look at history. The Republican Party was created in 1854. The first Republican Party platform... Hang on a minute, because I just read that thing and said when things were reversed was 1804. So this is so confusing. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely dive into it. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. For sure. Who knows? Adopted at the know party's the first section. national convention in 1856, promised to defeat, quote, those twin relics of barbarism, polygamy, and slavery. Those twin relics were spreading into the Western territories. Republicans feared that as those territories became states, polygamy and slavery might become permanent parts of American life. Polygamy the marriage of one man to multiple women devalued women and made them a kind of property. Slavery, of course, did the same to blacks, literally. The Democrats were so opposed to the Republicans and their anti-slavery stance that in 1860, just six weeks after the election of the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, South Carolina, a state dominated by Democrats, voted to secede from the Union. The Civil War that followed was the bloodiest war in U.S. history. It led to the passage by Republicans of the 13th Amendment, which freed the slaves, the 14th Amendment, which gave them citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave them the vote. In 1870, the first black senator and the first black congressman were sworn in, both Republicans. In fact, every black representative in the House until 1935 was a Republican, and every black senator until 1979 was too. For that matter, the first female member of Congress was a Republican. The first Hispanic governor and senator were Republicans. The first Asian senator, you get the idea. Republicans also kept their pledge hmm. to defend women's rights. In 1862, the Maria Anti-Bigamy Act was passed by the Republican-controlled Congress to put an end to polygamy. In 1920, after 52 years of Democratic Party opposition, the 19th Amendment was ratified thanks to the Republican Congress, which pressured Democratic President Woodrow Wilson to drop his opposition to women's rights. In the final tally, only 59% of House Democrats and 41% of Senate Democrats supported women's suffrage. That's compared to 91% of House Republicans and 82% of Senate Republicans. There certainly was a war on women, and it was led by the Democratic Party. But while Republicans had won a major battle for women's rights, the fight for black civil rights had a long way to go. In the 1920s, Republican President Calvin Coolidge declared that the rights of blacks are just as sacred as those of any other citizen. By contrast, Amen. when famed sprinter Jesse yep. Owens, a staunch Republican, 
won four gold medals at the 1936 Berlin Olympics, he was snubbed by Democratic President Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt only invited white Olympians to the White House. Two decades later, it was a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower, who sent the 101st Airborne Division to escort black students into Little Rock Central High when Arkansas Governor Alva Forbes, a Democrat, refused to honor a court order to integrate the state's public schools. The Civil Rights Act of 1960, which outlawed poll taxes and other racist measures meant to keep blacks from voting, was filibustered by 18 Democrats for 125 hours. Not one Republican senator opposed the bill. Its follow-up bill, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, is one of the landmark pieces of legislation in American history. That, too, survived a filibuster by Democrats thanks to overwhelming Republican support. But you might be thinking, all that's in the past. What have Republicans done for women and blacks lately? The answer you'd hear from professors, journalists, and celebrities is not much. And this time, they'd be right. They'd be right because the Republican Party treats blacks and women as it treats everyone, as equals. The Democratic Party never has, and it still doesn't. Today's Democrats treat blacks and women as victims who aren't capable of succeeding on their own. The truth is, this is just a new kind mm. of contempt. So there is a party with a long history of racism and sexism, but it ain't the Republicans. I'm Carol Swain for Prager University. Thanks for watching. To keep our videos free, click here. I'm definitely learning some things I never knew before. Yeah. Well, I think that one, I found that very interesting and here's why, you know, you do, like the way she put it, right? Like what are, what has the Republicans done for blacks and women recently? Mm -hmm. And the answer is nothing because they, they are treating everyone as the same where you have the Democrats who are always, you know, uh, rah, rah, rah and reinforcing victim mentality, you know, um, and, you know, and, but they want, but they want to scream equal rights. Right. So right. <clears throat> you have the Republicans on one side saying, okay, well, we're going to treat, it's going to be equal right yeah. we're treating you as equal and that so you're not going to be giving anything because it's yeah equal, you don't get special right? preferences like what, special treatment because of your race or your skin color you get equal treatment or your sexuality or anything like this is yeah. now i will right. say that doesn't ring true for all republicans i've ever met no like there are some who are very religious who think they're holier than thou mm -hmm. uh, against people who are sinners and shit like that and i'm not down with that but the overall the overall uh, arch arcing like you know main thing about the republican party is you can work and be successful if you're willing to like work for what you want right like anybody can achieve the american dream if you're willing to put in the time and so uh you know uh, i think overall it's pretty obvious i feel I, I just it's hard for me to support democrats knowing this information right like and not all of them, just the ones yeah. who are like pushing for me, some of this I, other stuff. So, yeah, and you know, for me, like I'll have to do like more digging, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, and I just think it's just because, like, I feel like sometimes, or I want to be the devil's advocate on some of the some things. Still, is yeah. you know, when you think about how much oppression there was and women's suffrage, and um, you know going back and thinking about where we're at today right <clears throat> like we want we want everybody to be equal right but we have to still think about like things are still not equal right like we're not we still don't treat everyone the same mm -hmm. um and i don't know that it's necessarily always a victim mentality i think it's there yeah. but i think that there is a lot that still occurs that people don't want to address and no, yeah, so absolutely. We can't I 100% agree expect, with that. Yeah, yeah. So we can't expect to say, okay, well, yeah. everybody's being held equal, right? Well, but my question is, is what is the Republicans doing, though, right, to make it very well, clear and my question that we is want to it you, to be equal, right? Right. Okay. So in 
now you say everyone is not treated equally. How do you, they're not? How do you make everyone treat everyone equally without actually infringing on people's rights or their freedoms? Well, I think that's I think that's the problem, though. I think that's well, exactly the, the problem. If like to have every you have you to can't. force you can't force everybody to treat every we have to educate people that everybody should be treated equally and fairly but you can't make people Correct. do that so i i feel like that is a losing race that we're trying to win right like and honestly we have all, to just right. do our best it, it to make 95 percent of it and to be equal. honest it starts at home when you're Some growing up stop. with your parents it starts there yeah i mean and like, so how do you you know how do you how do you change that is the question right without like actually forcing people or creating a law that says you can't you can't say this like you actually have to basically get rid of the constitution in order to force everyone to be treated a certain way but then you hear but then i hear stuff that is that is it's a uh, I don't know, like a false flag in a sense. Like, okay, I'm going to use the WNBA and the NBA because that's a very popular one, right? The WNBA does not get paid as much as the NBA, but that's because they don't bring in as much money, right? If you have two restaurants and one is bringing in hell of money, you can afford to pay your employees more money. But if you have this other restaurant that's just struggling to pay the bills, they can't afford to pay you any more money, okay? That is that is what's going on. The NBA is just more popular than the WNBA. The WNBA does not bring, it's actually a negative income for them. Like they don't actually make a ton of money. So these people are getting paid, but they're not bringing in the same views. But that shit's about to change with Caitlin Clark coming up, okay? Because that girl can shoot mega three pointers like it's nobody's business, it's crazy. So I think it, it, if we can continue that trend, maybe we will see that difference. But you can't expect to pay someone money for something they're not doing, you yeah. know what I mean? Like if you're not if you don't have the funds to pay people more money, you can't pay them more money. So it's not because they're women; it's just because a lot of people don't want to watch the WNBA. And I've heard men explain why they don't. You know, I don't because basketball is not my favorite sport. Yeah, I say I don't watch basketball or baseball. You know, I watch football. But if I do, sometimes I watch NBA. But like, I don't go out of my way to watch basketball. Period. But right. I'm definitely going to probably watch more of an NBA game over a WNBA game. But not, not maybe not now because maybe maybe I'll try and help support the WNBA by watching. I don't know. But like it's not always because you're a woman or because you're black. If it was if if it was just because you were black like NFL, NBA, you think of most pro sports, think about track. Most of them are black, honestly. They're just fucking yeah. amazing at Yeah, but at, I'm not talking athletics. about Yeah, but I'm not talking about like major sports or you know when you're getting into the yeah. the more and I hate to use the word elite of population, but you know right, yeah, yeah. a lot of you, your football players and your they, they yeah. simply just make more money. That that's what it is. Right. But then when you look at those situations and you're talking mm -hmm. about you know the, the the when you talk about say we're we're going to talk about blacks right and we're going to talk about yeah. them in sports because they do dominate a lot of sports. That's just true, right? That's just what, what's <laughs> They're happening. They're fucking when good at what they it, do. It, it I just... a lot they're just yes. talented people so, I don't know what to say. but but then if you think about but when you think about those kids that are living in the inner city right and they yeah. don't have a lot of opportunities that are in white suburbia right right um and what their dream is is to be able to do those sports to get the hell out of yeah. dodge and, and so, that's the only dream they have because right. their public school systems don't provide them the proper education that they need in order to advance right. to colleges or whatever it might be. Okay. So and like, that's that what I'm talking about. Like opportunity still isn't right, right. there. Do you know, and do you, and I hate to say it, but do you know where most of the, you know, who runs most of those places? Democrats. Democrats. Those are blue cities. If you look them up, look up, I want you to look up the most poverty stricken areas. And I guarantee you they're all blue states because that's what happens. And like, because like, so president Trump is for, school choice school choice would allow these children to actually go to a better school in white suburbia you know who fights against that democrats that's why i don't vote for them because i don't believe that i believe in school choice i believe i believe instead of the fucking 60 million or 600 million or whatever biden just passed for fucking uh, electric buses we could have put that into our education system to get these kids a better education better opportunities and and, and we're not doing that why because they don't actually care and I'm not saying necessarily Republicans care anymore, but Trump does. Even if he is a fucking asshole, he is an asshole. 
he's definitely an asshole. But you know what? If it gets people a better life, fuck it, let him be an asshole is what I say. But but these are all things that I'm trying to point right. out again. I I and I I'm going to okay. I am a Trump supporter. I believe that Trump can fix this stuff, not because he's a good person. I don't care if he's a good person. I think he's a businessman who knows what the fuck he's doing. And my life was better under him. And I have to go off what I know. So, but that being said, I want to present to you the information that I've found, like I said before, to help you make the best informed decision you can that, that suits you. And I don't, if you don't vote for Trump, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Right. I'm going to love you anyway, because you're fucking amazing. And I know that what, what way you vote is that, you have to vote your conscience and your heart and that's okay. Yeah. So, but I want you to, I'm hoping that you will see eventually what I see and why I'm able to overlook some of the things he's done because of the better things he's done and the things he cares about. Right. The things he cares about are things I care about, like right. school choice. You know, the right. only reason school choice and is- And that is why is well, I asked- it. Right, and that's why I asked you to try to search out some information for me there, to go, it's, to go and look because I, look guys i'm not voting for biden like that's not going to happen right like i i see the way my life is and i'm not going to vote for biden i'm just not going to do it but here's yeah. where i'm standing right now i also despise donald trump okay like i just do you guys know that i just do so yeah. my question is is there going to be enough information enough to make mm -hmm. me in november decide to go to the podium and push that button right this, those polls and push that yeah, button pretty much like, what, is there going to be enough well pretty much what tova said though like you have to figure out the things that are that are important to you to determine who is yeah. the better one for your choice what is important to you yeah. right well and, like with like and my thing is is it is it is, is it the the black community are you worried about them then i mean sorry republican yeah. but uh <laughs> Is it is it women's well, no. rights Republican? But if I mean if it's well, other things that but, maybe Democrats yeah. are better at, I don't see know. that's where I disagree a little when it comes to women's rights because I am one of those ones that was up in arms over the overturning of Roe vs Wade. So, like you know, but and, like, and, and, but and why? From my under so my thing is, I think a lot of people misunderstood what Roe versus Wade really was, and all it did was give states the right to choose whether or not Correct. so that you still have the right so if you if you live in a state that you know forbids abortion then whatever i personally so while i am that's the problem for me I, though while i am pro-life i am not narcissistic enough to think the world should revolve around me so i do believe in pro-choice within the first trimester only I agree. and after that ab adoption should be the issue but i also believe we need to uh fix adoption because that shit is whack yeah like so whack okay. we should be placing children with really good loving parents and homes and they make it very very hot it is like buying a car or these days like shit i don't even know i don't even know if you can buy a car for that but like it's so expensive my sister-in-law who lives in england was appalled that we would charge somebody money to buy a child that's literally human trafficking in a sense right but like because they they will set children up in, in care over there they pay for that right but uh there's more things that have to change because of that. But I also believe that if we have equal rights, that should include the father because that child is not just the woman's. No. That is two do DNAs and they should both have to agree on the outcome of what that child's life is going to be, whether or not they're going to keep it or, and that's an unpopular opinion. I get it. Roast me in the comments. Fuck. Okay. Okay. So, I believe in equal rights across the board. Okay. So Real quick, I'm going to rewind for a second because okay. I don't I don't disagree. We we share that same opinion when it comes yeah. to father's rights. We've talked about that, right? Right. Because right, right. that also is something that I will go toe to toe about. Yeah. However, le le leading back to Roe versus Wade, but the, it, yes, it did give it to the states, but that's the problem. I think it should have never been taken from federal level because of I live in a state that has a heartbeat law, right? I live yeah. in that state. Me too. So here, yeah. So here, like I think about my 15 year old daughter, right? Yeah. Something might happen to my 15 year old daughter. I don't know about it. And we don't know until after the heartbeat law, right? It's gonna take place. What happens if she's afraid to tell? What happened no matter what it is. Yeah. And then now it's illegal for me to do anything or help my 15 year old daughter because of a law. Well, technically, I mean, you can't, you can't, 
you can go you can go to a state now my 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 hang up and why i'm not as opposed to it is because technically roe versus wade was based on a lie she came out in a video and admitted that she was not raped she lied about it in order to get the abortion so it was literally based on a lie which fucking sucks for the people you know involved that's a whole other soapbox speech that i would have about women who claim rape when it didn't happen i i don't want to get into that here because i can make an entire 500 hour long video on that one subject alone there's nothing worse to do to a person than ruin their life that way it's disgusting uh but so that's where i'm like Ugh, i if you live in a state you know the people that vote in the state should have the majority i feel like should be okay to be a law even though i de technically disagree with it i think to give everyone the fairest chance within the first trimester, have the father and mother sign off on it. If they're both in agreement, okay, fine. Not I, That wouldn't be my choice, but it's not, it's not my body. However, I do believe the baby should be a factor and I do not agree with any type of abortion after the first trimester. I watched a baby, I watched an abortion thing simulated at 20 weeks and it was one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my life. And so no one will ever convince me that that is fucking okay. Uh, and I'm not even going to describe it here because we'd probably get banned Agreed. on YouTube if I did it, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but within the first trimester, as long as the mother and father both agree that that is the choice they want to make, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, and that way it, it protects women who have been assaulted, young children who maybe are not ready, who made a mistake. Uh, I think that is the best middle ground, right? 75% of people, 85% of people are covered with that one thing. And I think that is what should be important. It's not full on anybody can abort a baby at any point i don't care if it's coming out of your vagina kill it like there's some people who feel that way not everybody but some people and then there's other people who are no you can't have an abortion you can't well, have birth control fuck you i will and see here's the thing where people get where people can get hung up on my opinion with some of that right um because of how i felt specifically when it came to roe versus wade however however um i do not believe in rah 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 my body my choice here's the thing i think that if you are if that is the decision you're making then you need to have the conscious decision to know that you're killing a child let's not pretend that it's right. not a baby though let's not pretend that yeah it's i hate still that a baby, i hate that excuse. right it's a parasite. But, yes yes yeah Come that's on. not that, that that to me like i'm just going to make that very clear like how i feel so i am not necessarily pro-choice or pro-life i am yes, very yes. kind of middle with a, a lot of the way i think about things so like uh, you know but i was upset about the overturn and that is because i live in a heartbeat you know law yeah. state well and, and i think it was unnecessary i think about i think it was fine the way it was yes like, why not too. just leave it alone me too and that, that's honestly that's my biggest problem is why did we even fuck with it it was perfectly fine within the first trimester. And I, I why I'm, did we fuck with it? I'm agreeing with y'all on everything you're saying. Uh, and I, like, like Carol said, like I'm in the middle. Like I, for me, it's for me. I'm not for me having an abortion is not heard of. Like that wouldn't happen mm -hmm. because nope. that's my choice, you know. And my my husband wouldn't be okay with that either. And I do take his feelings into consideration. Um. But I mean, I'm I'm fixed. I'm you know I'm not having all my babies. So. <laughs> that ship's done sealed. <laughs> I she have, got spayed. I, I got right. a gun. I got a boy and a girl. We're good. <laughs> yeah, one, one two. The eight. problem is it's and here's the why. Here's why I think a lot of it should have been mostly left alone, and that yeah. it's because as much as we would like to see it govern more, that's my thing. I think there should be more rules to it, right? Yeah. But because you have so many that use it as a form of birth control that i'm not okay with that me either fucking go yeah, on a 100%. pill woman what the fuck's your problem like yeah, yeah do I something agree. else but it's not it's yeah. not a form it's not a form of that but you do have health problems that could come up you too i would mm -hmm. feel bad for sally down the road that's already got five kids and the condom broke and she already can't yeah. take care of the five kids that she has you know, and who am I to tell her that she's got to now have a sixth one for what? Well, and then to have know. less, then, have there's, less. There's also like, I, it's, yeah. There's also women who are allergic to the pill. So every like almost every pill, I know somebody yeah. who literally can't take none of the pills. 
can't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then you have the ring. People are allergic to that, or they have a reaction, some kind of reaction to it. Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody can have a reaction well, to, I mean, a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, and sometimes but... accidents happen. People make mistakes. They make bad choices, especially if they're drinking or whatever. And that's why, you know, I think within the first trimester, I think that gives people plenty of time, and it covers almost all your bases, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think people have come too much to think about it has to be my way or the highway. It has to be one or the other. And we have to meet in the middle because that's the only way this shit works here. You know what I mean? That's the only way we survive and we unify is by doing what's great. The best for like 75% of people, right? Because not everybody's always going to agree and you have your, your extremists, right? Or we'll even say 80%. So 10% extreme on the right, 10% extreme on the left. And then everybody else in the middle is like, feeling the way we feel right Mm -hmm. maybe nuances here and there but like overall i think we all want the same things we just have a difference in opinion how to get from point a to point b some people want to take an uber some people want to take a lift that's the analogy i use all the time you know it's like um but i think until people can have these conversations civilly and disagree civilly we've gotten to the point where we can't like it's hard for me sometimes honestly to keep my mouth shut or bite my tongue when people are saying things that i disagree with and i acknowledge that because i just don't understand how they can feel that way you know what i mean Like, why don't you see it the way I do? Why can't you see what I see? And I realize that, you know, sometimes I have to try and see what other people are seeing. seeing. It's not always about me, you know, and and I'm trying so hard. Well, Uh, but at the same time, like, I have not heard anything yet to sway my belief or my opinion. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm just. And it's all and it's all perspective, Mm -hmm. right? It's all perspective. That's why not everybody sees the way we like we want them to see things, right? Right. Because it could be, you know, your different ideologies growing up, a lot yeah. of different things, right? Change that say. perspective. <laughs> like, yeah, you know. So, I mean, it just depends on what's going on. So, like I said, I was raised in a really liberal household, you know, like with my mom, because like I said, she was overpowering, she was overbearing. Like my dad was you know the army guy you know and yeah he was always more conservative his whole life and i always say he was he grew up in the olden days right because my dad um it was well my dad would be 81 right or going to be 81 this year yeah um but you know i just think that um i just think that just depends on how like my kids and i will disagree on something right like uh, we'll have an argument or something will happen and they will feel one way, but I feel another, right? Because it's about perspective of the conversation that happened or the mm-hmm. argument that happened. And so they seen it one way, I seen it another way. And sometimes we have to try to come up with common ground. And that's what you were saying. Like it's, where yeah. is this common ground that we're looking for? And um, and that's what I'm trying to find, right? Like this is like an inner journey for myself to try to figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, is Donald Trump really going to be somebody that I'm going to go vote for? I don't know. Um, yeah. Because if I don't come up yeah. to that conclusion, I won't vote at all, you know, because right. I'm not voting for Biden. I'm just not going to do it. Which I, which I think so, is like, honestly, um, people, like yeah. some people say, well, you have to vote or blah, blah, blah. No, that's, you know, not voting is like voting for the other. Guy. That's not true. If you if you literally cannot vote your conscience, then don't like don't do that to yourself. Right. Because then then you have might have all type mm-hmm. of argument you know, regrets and shit like that. And like, I don't regret my vote one bit at all. And I still don't, I still on I still hundred percent plan on voting for Trump. I believe that he can fix the nation, even if he is a little bit of a dick or big dick, whatever. I mean, I don't know what he has to be honest, but I mean, sometimes he gives off that small dick energy. Sometimes he'd be like, okay, okay, Trump, I see you. Maybe mm-hmm. you're packing. I don't know. I but, uh, he does say some shit though. I'll say, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Like sometimes he says something like, did he just fucking say that? He just fucking said that. Okay, cool. All right. Did he? Rewind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but like at the same time, like the policies, I, I, I fuck with his policies and that's what it came down to. So, you know, I'm, I don't know. I think it's going to be cool to kind of show you, uh, or even both, both me and I feel like me and Deadhead, like show you our perspectives, kind of the information that we've intaked. Yeah, I feel like me and you are more on the same wavelength. Yeah, to well, just I just want to show you what I see, and then if you end up seeing what I see, cool. If not, but, that's cool too. Like, but like Carol said, it's because probably the way I was raised. I mean, I was raised in a very conservative home, so. <laughs> yeah, I've never really fit into the mold of anything. Like my parent, uh, 
my dad is extremely no, my my dad, mom is mostly conservative my dad and me i'm very much in the middle to be honest my dad had a bitch fit at me when he found out i voted for voted for bill clinton just saying yeah, yeah. i mean it was a it was, i mean it was a bad day in that <laughs> from what from what i do know bill clinton wasn't a terrible person or a terrible no, he president. wasn't he was, he was a, a great person right he was a great action president like but that's, but I was, that's exactly that was my point. Is my very first I don't time to I ever vote. Person. I was 18. It was the very first time I ever yeah. or nine, 18. Yo, I, don't, I mean, I don't remember. you know, I think it was, I think it was Chris you know, Rock funny. that said, uh, you know, if uh, if Hillary wasn't the first one on her knees to do the thing. <laughs> I mean. You know what's so funny? We were just talking about, like, my dad being extremely Republican, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I got to tell you what, my dad, even in his old dementia ways hated donald trump hated donald <laughs> trump hated donald trump as the president hated the man and it was so funny because he'd have he has dementia okay he had dementia yeah so we would be in the hospital <clears throat> a lot of things they ask dementia patients is, is who's the current president mm -hmm. well i'll tell you what my dad remembered every fucking time he couldn't tell you nothing else but if you asked him who the president of the united states was he would say fucking trump fucking donald, every, every fucking donald trump like yeah <laughs> What's so, My dad like, do you, hated Donald do you think, Trump as president. Do you think that? Do you think that shaped your opinion at all? I like, think that him? my husband's. Uh, my husband's also a Republican, yeah. and Who doesn't um, like Trump? hates Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> so, well, so um, yeah, okay. So, I I, like, that... I'm really curious to see, like, as we go through this, like, if it, it's going to be cool. I mean, not cool, but like, it's going to be interesting, really interesting to see if your opinion changes based on certain information. I think that's, I don't know. Enlightenment is cool. Learning new things is cool. Like, you know, and. Or if our opinion changes at all. No. Yeah. Or if our opinion changes for that matter. Like I'm not above like saying that, like, like I said, Trump is not no, because, perfect. Like, I might find I'm out some shit things, I don't like either, but. I'm learning things I never learned in school. I'm learning things that I've never researched, you know, yeah, so, I mean, well, just, I mean, it's just certain things like people be like, oh, well, he 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 hates gay people. And I'm like, but he was the only president to like he was the first president to appoint an openly gay man to an intelligent position in his cabinet. Like, you know, I mean, to me, that doesn't scream. He hates gay people. That's just me. You know, it's just certain things that I like people will say I'll look it up and then I'm like, but that but was it a PR stunt. Me. No, nobody even knew who this guy was until he came out and talked about it. It wasn't okay. a thing. Okay. He's and he's still a Trump supporter today. And then I've seen like <laughs> the walk away stories and shit like that. So it's like it's it's a lot of information over the last four years. See, that and, I, and I do me have where I'm at. I do have a lot of gay friends that do support Trump. And then I have a lot oh, of gay I do friends too. that do not actually you know. <laughs> but they, they all like they all like having money is what it comes down to. <laughs> and they're very patriot they're very patriotic. Well, Maybe we need to we need to find. But we also like see having if there's money a in our channel pockets. on YouTube that says "gay for, for gay for Trump" or something. No, yeah, no, there are there's there's a ton of them out there. Like I I could show you a ton of. I follow a lot of a lot of conservative uh, gay people, trans people, uh, people of color. Like I like to get a perspective from everybody. But like, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. This is a cool journey that I think we're going to take, and I think we're all going to learn something. And um, hopefully, and you know, understand each other better too, which I think is fucking cool, right? Yeah. Like, and hopefully, you know, yeah. maybe people Same. in the comments can share with us as much as I don't necessarily want to hear it. Why you disagree with me, or why but you disagree with us, or maybe have why you support Trump? Conversation. You don't have to call yeah. us names or nothing. Yes, just I was getting ready to say. Just let's have a yeah, conversation. I, we're not here. We're not calling nobody names. We're just being look, calm. No, and that's exactly what I was going to say. If you guys, even if if your opposition to these ladies and what they're saying like leave if you can like leave a, a video that you might that we might want to check out you know what yeah. i mean and let's be calm cool and collective in in those comment sections because i don't agree with everything they're saying we've been sitting here and being able to have a conversation like real people you know and not agree on every single thing that we're saying to one another and there's no yelling there's no screaming we might get excited a bit but yeah. there's there's no yelling yeah. there's no screaming we we love each other and it's fine to have that conversation and it doesn't have yeah. to be some weird freaking line drawn in the sand like i feel a lot of people are all. doing lately that's not necessary 
right. not necessary. I 100% agree. So, this um, is but, not, and this is not about changing anybody's mind. This is about us on a journey to make sure that we're going to make the best possible decision come November that we possibly and, can. And you just know. a heads up, any any hate at all won't even be read. It'll be deleted, deleted. By, by the first deleted. freaking sentence. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not... If you want, if you so want to shift time. our opinion in some way, do not come at us with name-calling and insults and all of that, okay? Our opinions are based on pure research that we've done. Whether or not you agree with it or think it's right or whatever, this is what we've learned. This is where we stand. If you want to try and actively change our opinion... You can't do it with hate and violence and threats and insults. I'm not going to read it. In fact, and like normally I would roast the fuck out of you. Yeah, we're done. Because that's what I like to do. But I'm done with it now. Okay. Those are just going to get deleted. They're not even going to be on there. We're not even going to address it. If you want to have a real conversation, have a real grown up conversation. Okay. Give me facts. Show me policies. And do not come with Biden has the best, you know, has created all these jobs. Okay. Those jobs came back from COVID being on lockdown. Or okay? I don't want to hear that opinion. Because Trump ain't racist. That's also not a thing. So, like, I if, if he, give me, if you give think me real Trump facts. If Trump is racist, I need to see video evidence where he was actually being racist. And, I mean. Yeah. Receipts or it didn't happen. If you you're come going like Jesus to or make that, a claim. A thing. Yes. I was going to say, if you are going to come in the comments and say some off the wall crap about Donald Trump, whom I don't even like. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to say he's racist, going to say something off the wall, then I need you to leave receipts in the comments because I'm yeah. trying to learn. Right. I, so here, here's, here's, a, here's it all in the nutshell, guys. This is why we're doing this. So I am very ignorant when it comes to um, politics and policies and different things. And that's what I'm trying to learn. So we're going from the beginning and we're going to go through. So Carol can make a form decision by, by November. I never cared about government in school. I never chose to pay attention. So all those things I'm trying to understand and learn. Okay. So if that's not for you, then keep it pushing because that's why we're here. Okay. Or we uh, have I, other I, we, content we just you might enjoy. Just yeah. Don't, don't look at the political stuff. Check check the videos and check the playlist. Like we got all kinds yeah. of stuff. We got 100% funny videos. Agree with Carol, though. Yeah, hundred percent. We got music videos. We got yes our own funny videos where we roast ourselves pretty much. <laughs> That's always fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is always yeah. Fun. Yeah, you know, so I, I think, uh, yeah, no, I think this has been uh, a great video and I, I really am enjoying, I'm going to enjoy this journey with you, Carol. And because I'm interested in to learn to like see, maybe see if I shift my opinion based on maybe things you see or, or comment on or whatever. So I think see, it's going to be a fun I just journey look, for all of us to learn. I just looked down and realized we've been here for an hour. It doesn't even feel like an hour. Yo. <laughs> so like, it's really been, I've enjoyed this conversation. And Better Betty Cop podcast on fleek. <laughs> hour long video she is yeah got hey. it today we got it all right guys well with all that being said um make sure you uh leave a comment down below for us and we appreciate that and we'll go ahead a and nice catch you guys in the, in the next episode of bitter betty in politics yeah. don't be a hater because we'll spread be bitter love. <laughs> spread love just kidding Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified anytime the videos drop. Thanks. See ya.